Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you from the Paper Crane Yarns store in Calera, Alabama, which is about 25 miles south or so of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, yep, I have finally opened my store. So if you've been watching my channel or following me on Instagram, then you likely know I have been working on getting my physical location open for the past, well, really the past year since I started my hand dyeing business, um, which you can find on Etsy currently as Paper Crane Yarns. I will have that linked below. And you can also find me on Instagram as Paper Crane Yarns. And uh, you can find me in person at Paper Crane Yarns. So I've been, uh, today marks one full week since my store has been open. Um, today's Saturday, I think February 5th, that sounds right. And last weekend, January 29th, was my grand opening. Um, so I can't believe I've already been open for a full week, but it's been such an exciting week. And uh, last night we had our first weekly knit night, which was super fun. Um, it was just amazing to finally have people in person to knit with and um, to have people visiting my store for that purpose. It's just so cool to feel like it's finally coming together and to be having this notion of building a local community in this small town because I've only, I, I lived in Birmingham for many years and I have only lived here in this small town since my husband and I got married in 2019 and since then I haven't really met a lot of the local people, not too many at least, and uh, so it's really great to finally be making some friends and meeting people in this area. So uh, my last podcast, I think, was at the end of November, and I actually recorded an entire podcast since then in December, and it was about an hour long. I would say it was a pretty good episode, but I never got around to uploading it to my computer and um, editing it, so it never, it never existed in terms of my channel. So before I actually start showing the projects that I have with me. Um, my other exciting announcement, as if opening a store wasn't fun or stressful enough, um, I am pregnant again, and I'm 15 weeks along, so uh, if, if you have, if you were with me the last time this happened, then it didn't, it didn't exactly go right and so I've been hesitant to share that again especially publicly because the last time I made it all the way all the way to 12 weeks before everything happened and so I'm, I'm just I've got this nagging feeling in the back of my mind like I've got to be careful because I don't want to go through it all again and have to explain again and I know at the end of the day, this is not a fact that affects your life in any capacity, but I'm sure if you're watching this, then you have at least some interest in what I do and what's going on in my life, even on a just a superficial level. So I did want to share that because <laughs> it's going to A, impact my knitting. Um, I had a lot of sweaters planned for this year, and I still do, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel huge right now and none of my clothes fit at the moment. I'm, I've got a lot of shawls planned and accessories, which might be for the best because I, I mostly knit sweaters anyway. Um, okay. So we're this far in already. I guess it's time I go ahead and show you what I've actually been working on because there's quite a bit. I didn't even bring everything today. I, just don't want to keep you here all day long. And um, my store is open right now, so I can only record as long as nobody walks through the door. <laughs> um, so hopefully if I do get a visitor in the next 30 minutes or so, it'll be somebody who knows that I do this YouTube channel and so I don't look like a complete crazy person. <laughs> okay, let's start with um, my finished objects. 
So I would be wearing this today, but again, this whole being pregnant and my clothes not fitting well thing, <laughs> um, I'm not. But this is my Be Thankful cardigan by, I think it's Lily Kate France or Lily Kate Francis. I'll have all of the show notes, the pattern info and yarn info down below in the description. Um, the last time I recorded this, I was wearing this sweater and it fit really well and it still does, but what I'm wearing underneath, it's, it's a crop sweater. So what I'm wearing underneath this sweater doesn't work out so well with this. So I couldn't put it on, but I might try to insert some footage from the last recording because I still have the recording and maybe you can see the way that it wears on me. Um, but I'll stand up and show you. So the color is getting a little blown out here, but this was such a tremendous project. I really enjoyed knitting this and I love the finished object. I think it's extremely gorgeous. And this was a piece that I, uh, a piece that kind of fits um, a mental gap I had in my wardrobe before now of something that I really wanted. This whole, actually everything about it, the, the cropped, length and the balloon sleeve. I had a store-bought sweater similar to this some years ago in black and it got kind of ruined so I was I was really wanting like a, a replacement of obviously better quality something that I made so this ticked all the boxes. This is the weekend wool by Green Mountain Spinnery that I picked up at New York Sheep and Wool at, in Rhinebeck um, this past year. And uh, the story goes that I, well, at Rhinebeck, I don't know if it was just me, I think it was probably everybody, I couldn't pull up anything on Ravelry on my phone or any other website for that matter. It, there were so many people and who knows exactly. Um, I should have come prepared with printed out patterns, but I didn't. So when I found this wool, I knew I wanted a sweater quantity. I wasn't quite sure how much I would need, so I kind of guessed and I asked the woman at the booth what she thought and it turns out I was just just a little short for this project. So um, I think I initially purchased six skeins maybe and uh, I used up every single bit in the sweater and I had to order more. To be safe, I ordered two more skeins and I was able to used the entirety of one skein, and then I used maybe this length of this skein. And if I didn't have this last skein, the project would not have been finished unless I tanked back some of the length, which I really didn't want to do. So <laughs> yeah, um, I have basically an entire skein left of this weekend wool, which is not a complaint. It's truly gorgeous. It feels so, um, it's like airy and it, if you've ever used, perhaps you've used this, but if you haven't, maybe you've used Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. I think this is a very a similar yarn. And this is the chestnut colorway. So, yep. I so loved this project, I really did. I got to go um, camping and work on, to work on this project with my family, that was really wonderful. The buttons are incredibly cute. It's moons and stars, I got these on Etsy. And I talked about them in my last episode. So I, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough good things about this truly gorgeous sweater. This is the favorite sweater that I've completed so far. And um, I, I did knit this along with Maria at Woolen Forest Knits. She did a Be Thankful cardigan knit along. I think that was back um, in November. I, I can't remember at this point. I finished this surprisingly quickly. It was a very quick knit once all my yarn came in. And uh, yeah, it was such a, a delight to knit. So my shop mannequin, Margaret, I might put this on her today. Um, I'm hesitant because I don't sell this yarn, but I guess I'm also selling the idea of knitting. So I could probably get, I could probably get away with it. So my next finished object is my Birds of a Feather Shawl by uh, Andrea Mowry or Drea Renee Knits. 
This is a project I've been working on for what feels like forever at this point. I put it down a couple times, especially when I started my Shawlography by Stephen West. This kind of went into hibernation and then I put Shawlography into hibernation and I pulled this out and um, I just really wanted to get something done because I felt like it had been a while other than the cardigan. That was, I mean, that was like a week's worth of knitting. So I finally got this project completed. So again, this is Birds of a Feather. The two yarns that I used are my hand dyed yarn. This is my Merino single base in the Sea Thing colorway. It's sort of a minty blue with bronze and brown speckles. And the accompanying silk mohair is the Pearl Soho Tussock in the Pink Fog colorway. So this was a leftover from when I knit my Sheer V by Jessie Mae Designs. And this was some of my hand dye that I had in stash. Um, but it's completed. Make sure, so this is the right side. So it has this lovely, elegant, sort of textured spine going down. So you can see it kind of creates this ridge that divides the two halves of the project. I'm trying to show you. <laughs> uh, well, there is a, a lovely textured spine going down the center. You can see it here. This is a really huge project. I haven't measured it, but it is a gigantic wrap. My only real complaint is that these are not two colors I often wear. I enjoy both of these colors, but my wardrobe is usually a lot darker. And I'm sure you could wear this with something black, but I just haven't had the opportunity to wear this so far. So I've more just been enjoying it. <laughs> It's uh, a little too long to show you here in a video, but I will try to get some additional footage to show you the full length of it, and I'm going to try to put it on. The other thing I'm having trouble with, which I always have trouble with with shawls, is styling it, um, putting it, just actually putting it on. I think this would be a beautiful wrap to wear around draped around your shoulders and your back with maybe a dress. If you look at the pattern, she also styles it with like the bulk of it in the front and then you wrap it. I think it looks cuter than I'm giving it credit for because it's just a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, yeah, that's not bad. So birds of a feather. It was nice to get this off of the needles. These are, this is a fingering and lace weight project, so um, lots of yardage in this project, lots and lots of stitches. There's no telling how many. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to keep it on for a minute until it gets too hot in here. It's freezing outside, so I have my heater on in the store, and now I'm wearing a sweater and this, and uh, sitting in front of lights, so Whew, it's getting quite warm. <laughs> I'll move into my works of progress, which I have far more of. So I'll start with probably my oldest work in progress out of this bunch. So I had been working on this quite a bit when I first started it. It's a very simple project. This is my spring sampler shawl by Nordic Yarn Imports. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And uh, again, super, super simple. This thing is huge. I'm, I've reached the point now where I've done all the increasing, so it's as wide as it's going to be, and now I'm pretty far into, I'm about, uh, so after, after you hit this eighth stripe, since it's free, I'll kind of tell you about it. After you hit this eighth stripe of color, about halfway through, you begin your decreases, so I've, I kind of uh, wasn't paying attention and I started a little bit later, but I've done about half of this navy stripe, and then all of this lighter blue um, for decreases, so I'm making pretty good progress. I think this will be done pretty quickly at this point. This has been sort of my main shop knitting when I'm not sewing bags or helping customers or what have you um, because it is just so, so easy. So the yarn is the Sadness Garn Tin Linna, and I believe it it's a, I know it's a linen blend. I think it's with cotton and bamboo. I don't have the yarn bands anymore. Those are long gone. So the five colors to this project are this nearly black, 
Um, I would call this like a light lilac, um, navy blue, brighter blue, <laughs> and um, a, like a tan pink. So after you do your first five stripes, you repeat your stripe pattern for your colors. And uh, yeah, I, I don't have the one page pattern in front of me, so I can't remember if you're done after you've knit a full repeat, but I think, I think that sounds about right. Next project is the second sock for the Lamplighter socks. Uh, the designer for this pattern is Fleur and Ink Knit Company. And again, this was a free pattern on Ravelry. So these are, again, the Lamplighter socks. I got this first one done, I guess, back in November when I recorded my last podcast. And it's been sitting in my shop space for a sample because the black and the cream yarns are my hand dyed yarns. This black yarn I'm calling Ink and Quill. And uh, this was like a one of a kind. This golden yarn is Little Miss Sunshine by 29 Bridges Studios, I think is the full name. I got this as a free gift at India Untangled. So I very much love this sock pattern. I think it's so gorgeous. <laughs> and I'm excited to finally have the second one on the needles, which is being held in this project bag I made myself not too long ago. Um, despite being a project bag maker, I don't really have many myself. So I, I really loved this design. So I decided to keep one for me and all of the ones that I put in the store have sold out. So I'm going to have to make some more. I'm nearly done with the cuff color work. I did this knitting all in a day, I believe. So it goes very quickly. I've almost finished the lamps. And so I guess I just have a bit more to go here and then the rest will be pretty quick knitting. I'm using my Chow Goo 9 inch circular needles. Basically all she wrote about this project, it's got a very interesting ribbing pattern. It's not just a one by one. The knit stitch is actually, I think just through the back loop. So this has a bit more texture. I would say like the knit ridges are not focusing. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this technique. Um, the color work with the first sock, I was initially worried that it was going to be perhaps a little too tight to wear, but it's been sitting on that sock blocker for so long that now it, um, there's no issue. I love looking at the floats. <laughs> I could probably finish this in an, after in an afternoon if I just chose to sit down and work on it. Um, again, I, I haven't done so, but I need to get this one complete. It got a little too hot for the shawl, so I had to take it off. And as I was doing so, I was thinking about um, Kendra at the Balanced, uh, at Balanced Skein. She has a, a beautiful Instagram and she also does a YouTube channel. I, I saw she just put out another video. I haven't had a chance to watch it, so I need to hop on that. But some time ago, um, she created, she did this really funny video on Instagram I think it was before, it was definitely before I started recording podcasts and before she started, but it was this video of like things that all knitting podcasters say or do. And it's so hilarious. And I can't remember if taking off the knitwear halfway through the video was one of them, but I feel like it probably could be because I, every time I watch somebody <laughs> record a podcast, inevitably they have to take off the knitwear because the lights and the talking, it just, it becomes too much. Anyway, you should go check out her channel. I'm sure you already have, but uh, you should also find that video because it's it's on par. My next work in progress is the Marshland sweater by Tin Can Knits. This is a color work sweater, and um, I've I knit all of this in like a weekend. <laughs> I want to say but it was weeks and weeks and weeks ago and then I put it down and I haven't worked on it since, which has been kind of my MO here recently. I used to be 
such a straightforward knitter. I would pick a project and I would work on it until it was done. And now I'm just so excited about all the different yarn and all the projects. So I've been a little inconsistent with getting things actually finished, like my shawlography. I'm not even going to show that today. Anyway, this is the Marshland sweater by Tin Can Knits. I'm knitting this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. Um, it's the worsted weight. I, I think it's the non-superwash. Yeah, this is not a superwash, the, the superwash version. They were having a sale at some point some time ago, and it was something like buy three, get two free, or buy two, get one free, something of that nature. So the sweater is a pretty budget-friendly sweater that I've been knitting and loving. Ravelry, if you look at the project pages and sort it by most favorited, this will look familiar because there was another knitter, um, I don't have her username in my head, but she made a cardigan version. She, I think she, she knit a steek panel and then she steeked it to make a cardigan, if I, re if I remember her notes correctly. But th this was her color choice and I thought this was like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. So I had to replicate it. Um, they say that's like the best form of flattery. So I mean, this is the highest compliment, but I just loved her color choices. The only difference that I went with was she used a white yarn here and I decided to use an icy blue. I think her white was a better choice maybe because it provides a little bit more of a high contrast than this blue does since it's right next to this this other blue, but still, um, yeah, I just think this is incredibly beautiful. Um, so I'm, I'm knitting the, the body right now. After a certain length, you knit the color work for the hem, and then I think you knit the sleeves, and then you pick up for the neckline here for the collar. But I sort of almost like this. I mean, I don't think it would work. I'd have to do something here, or maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. Anyway, I like the width of this. I kind of like a boat neck, and especially right now, being pregnant and feeling like a monster, <laughs> and like my breathing, it's harder, and everything is harder. It would be nice to have something comfortable, and the last thing that I want ever in a sweater or anything else is for it to sit right up against my neck. I can't stand that. So this is this looks so appealing to me, but I, I will, just follow the pattern and knit the neckline eventually. But yeah, not too much I can say about this beautiful, beautiful project, except that I can tell you my colors. I noticed on my way out of the house today, one of my cats took the black yarn out of the basket and I didn't grab it. I put it up on a shelf, so I don't have that with me, but I think it is just called black. It's whatever their blackest yarn is. Um, for the Wool of the Andes, that's the one that I went with. So my other colors are this lovely gold color, and this is Brass Heather. So, yep, beautiful. I'm also using Wonderland Heather. This is like an icy blue, but it's obviously more vibrant than this, which I would also call an icy blue, and this one is called Clarity. And... I guess the color I also forgot to bring is gray. I will, again, I will do my best to link all of these colors because I'm sure that these are all available still. So this might've been called silver. I believe this was called silver. Oh, I just love looking at it. It's been tucked away for the past few weeks since I haven't been knitting it. So pulling it out again, I'm feeling inspired. Like I need to just get this body done. Cause I mean, it's, you can see it's practically there, so I need to work on it. <laughs> Story of my life right now with all of my projects. Okay, moving on. Another new cast on. <laughs> A Arialis sweater by Jennifer Steingas. And this one has also been a tremendous project. I'm sure you can tell now I've been really into color work recently, and I think it was just a couple episodes ago where I was talking about how I was afraid to knit charts. Um, it was when I actually made my Soldatna crop by Caitlin Hunter, 
that was my first real color work pattern and I did make a mistake when I was reading that chart but overall the experience was pretty easy and I learned a lot I don't wear that sweater because it's it's really way too cropped but maybe Margaret the mannequin can wear it because it's my hand dyed yarn <laughs> but uh but yeah so I've obviously overcome that fear and now I want to knit all of the color work if you saw my make nine on Instagram I think basically every pattern on there is some form of color work and I've just been loving it I can't get enough it's so much more entertaining I, I've gotten so bored of stock net um, and I'm sure that will pass but that's that's my feeling right now I just want all of the pattern the patterns and I want all of the charts so I, I've been so happy with this project and uh, this is being knit out of Kelborn Woolens in the uh, Scout line. The colors are Mulberry Heather and, again, I can't think of the gray right now, but I got both of these when I went to Rhinebeck. I actually got these at the Perfect Blend, the yarn store in Saugerties. So um, I, I like fell in love with the yarn instantly, and I actually am happy to say that I carry the Kelborn Woolens they're basically their whole line of yarns in my store and uh, one of them being the Scout collection. These colors were out of stock when I was placing my order for the store so I don't have these right now but I have a ton of other colors and you guys let me tell you being in this yarn store all day it's so hard not to just want to pull everything off the shelf for me but uh, I have I have plenty of yarn and I get to help other people pick out yarns for their own projects so I'm living vicariously. It's it's very satisfying. <laughs> so yeah, not much I can say. Um, this one looks like the Marshland sweater in terms of there's no collar, but I actually that's one of the choices for the pattern, and I I did want something loose around my neck, so that was the choice that I went with. So this one will actually stay like this. Well, I guess theoretically the Marshland sweater probably could work like this too. I mean. Well, I don't know if the floats are going to be exposed, but I'll try it on and, and see how it goes. Um, yeah, the color work took me no time at all. This is a DK weight yarn, and so it's knitting very quickly. This is my yarn cake I just started on another one. So I've got, I think I've got to get to something like 10 inches beneath the underarm, and then I can knit the hem and pick up for the sleeves. So another quick knit that I just spent a lot of time on and then I put it to the side so I really need to get some stuff done but I just love this pattern I think it's gorgeous for her um, again on Ravelry her project page she shows using a multicolored yarn for the accent and I was kind of wishing that I had a, a multicolored yarn because I thought the effect that she achieved with hers was so beautiful, but um, I'm happy to say that like, I really am satisfied. I think it's the high contrast and this particular purple shade, it's like purple and black. I think it's uh, beautiful regardless, so. And this is another project I have on my Licken needles. I really, I'm, I'm a metal needle knitter, a metal needle, knit, a metal needle knitter, <laughs> but I've been enjoying the wooden needles recently because um, yeah, this Licka set is really wonderful. I've heard some mixed reviews, but I'm a fan, so. And uh, because I know we all love floats, here are my floats looking so much better than previous floats. This project actually helped me to learn more about color work because she has a note in there to maintain your primary color in your right hand. And I'm a continental knitter, so I knit with my, you know, with my left hand, I, I hold my working yarn on my left hand, but I was holding my, my primary yarn, my main color in my right hand and doing uh, English style with that. And then the secondary color I was holding continental and that maintained an even float. I, that probably sounds pretty straightforward to those who have knit color work, but it's not something I had considered. I was the kind of person who would, uh, pick up my strands as I as they called for it so the floats were 
not nearly as neat, the tension was way off. Knitting it this way and following that tip, I think my tension, I would want to say, is kind of perfect. There's no puckering on the color work side and yeah, my floats, I just can't get over how neat they are. I think everything turned out really, really well. So I think this is a, I'm a, I'm proud of this project. <laughs> um, I think it shows a lot of my progress in terms of what I've learned. My camera's about to cut out, so I have to take a second to fix that. Okay, I made some space. Now I have plenty more time to record. I think I've been sounding kind of panicked this whole time because, uh, A, I know that somebody could walk in the store any minute and I'm kind of right here out in the open and I have a like a moat of yarn and projects so I'm definitely gonna build a reputation in this area for people who don't know I have a YouTube channel as being the uh, the interesting lady who sits in her store and uh, records videos or talks to herself and just throws yarn everywhere but uh they say uh, any publicity is good publicity, right? <laughs> so I do have another work in progress and this is going to be my active project for as long as I can maintain my squirreliness that I've, I've recently been developing. I'm gonna blame the pregnancy brain. <laughs> but I, I have been participating on Instagram in the Fiberwary uh, challenge, I guess you could call it. It's a, um, a, I'll have to put her username down below, but the woman who started it, she started it a couple years ago with the intention of helping to build the knitting community and the fiber arts community. And I just think it's a beautiful project. And um, I just love to see everybody's daily kind of their responses to the prompts of the of the daily tasks and getting to know everybody and seeing where like what they are working on and to learn more about them it's been really fun but yesterday was called olympic cast on and um one of the things is you can interpret the prompt however you see fit so i took it as pick a project that is going to be a bit of a monster <laughs> and uh to me so I, I did want to start on a cabled sweater that I will talk about in a little bit, but my fear was again, the changing aspects of my body um, during my pregnancy and after and the recovery period. And you know, you never know, I guess I, I, I've never had a baby before, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect in terms of everything. I, uh, there's already been changes, some of them reversible, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, my fear is to put a lot of time and effort and thought and planning and measuring into such a complicated project as a cable knit sweater, which I've never done before. And especially the one that I have my eye on in particular, it's knit in panels, which is also not as straightforward. In my mind, I like to do circular knitting um, like knitting in the round for all my sweaters and I've only knit pieces once for my husband's sweater <clears throat> and both patterns were Brooklyn tweed so I'm not sure if that's a I've only knit the one Brooklyn tweed pattern so I'm not it was the Jared flood I'm not sure if that's a consistency maybe in their designers because this other one is not by Jared flood I wanted to cast that on but I I'm feeling this hesitancy of maybe I need to wait until I'm a little bit more comfortable with my appearance again in my body and you know I just want to make sure I'm making the right decision in terms of what size and uh, all of that so now that I've talked that to death <laughs> I decided to cast on another project that I have been planning since Rhinebeck this is the powder wrap by Casa Pinka and uh, I picked up the yarn for this again at Indie Untangled so I'm really proud of myself because <laughs> I've already knit through, or I'm working on knitting through the majority of the yarn I picked up in uh, Rhinebeck and in the Untangled, so I feel good about those purchases. They obviously worked for me then, and they're working for me now, so kudos to me, I guess. <laughs> but I picked this because it's supposed to have, it, it's going to be a cable knit project, but this one is a shawl, so I'm, I can feel a lot better about the finished object. 
I did get to see the sample knit for this in this exact color at a booth at Indie Untangled and the second I saw it, I it was no question I wanted to make it. Um, if you watched my sort of Rhinebeck recap or saw my, my vlog footage from that, then you may remember, but I, I walked up to it and immediately was sold on the project, on the colorway, everything. So this is, again, the powder wrap by Casapinka, and the yarn is the Nurtured line by Julie Aslin. And the colorway is the uh, Leaf Pile colorway, which last night I was doing re research on this colorway because I couldn't stop thinking about it after knitting with it all day and feeling like this is the most beautiful yarn I've ever seen. <laughs> um, but it turns out this was an exclusive for Indie Untangled, but it looked like uh, in terms of colorway. You can't get it on the Julia uh, Julie Aslin website, but I think you can still buy this on the Indie Untangled website. It's $15 US a, a skein, I believe. So anyway, um, I truly love this yarn. It is, I mean, I think Leaf Pile so perfectly describes this color. It is not quite brown and not quite pink, something in between, but there's lots of, um, this is dyed in the wool and then spun actually by Green Mountain Spinnery, I learned yesterday. And you can see there's so many, there's so much depth in terms of the, colors in the wool so I, yeah I, I can't get it out of my mind it's just it's so beautiful and I love the texture everything about this it's um it's Rambouillet it's Targi Rambouillet and and uh it's Rambouillet Targi and Merino so it's a beautiful blend this is a 56 gram skein you get 130 yards per skein I think that they were calling this an Aaron weight. So uh, yeah, very much loving that. The pattern I have been obsessing over knitting it is so satisfying. <laughs> I love the pattern. Um, it's written really well. It's very clear. I haven't had any questions about it so far um, that I haven't been able to figure out. But just the pattern itself is so satisfying. I love knitting these crosses. The Method is really interesting. I knit something similar to this in my Knights Who Say Knit shawl, and I loved it then too. So yeah, I really love this pattern. I'm on the second pattern repeat right now. Um, I'm, I'm back on this section up here. So I actually made a decent amount of progress on this, I think yesterday, between knit night and uh, between customers and everything. And this is, I'm planning on working on this today and uh, this weekend. So yeah, I um, really can't say enough good things about this lovely project. If you were to knit this pattern, you wouldn't necessarily have to use this yarn, of course. This is the yarn that I think she designed the pattern with. Um, and she, and there are other colorways available on the website, Julia Aslin's website. But she also has notes in her pattern about using a fingering weight yarn and as well as how to do like a multicolored version. So the pattern is a little bit more diverse than just buy this yarn, knit this project. There's some variables, so you could um, choose your own adventure, so to speak. So uh, yeah, powder wrap, my favorite project at the moment. I don't think I've said that about anything else. So. Um, I can get away with it. I'm only going to show one other project and that is my uh, chunky knit crochet blanket. Um, I am not following a pattern, I'm just crocheting. These are all double crochets and uh, yep, yeah, no, no pattern, just found a whip that I liked. I'm using these three colors and I'm alternating. I'm doing different widths for each stripe. Just kind of playing with it, but I really like the way it's turning out. Initially, I was crocheting this for my uh, my home, but the corner that I'm sitting in that you really can't see in the video from this angle, I have a lot of yellow and pink right here. This is like a little knitting corner in the store. So I think this will look beautiful here. Um, so yeah, it, it's just line brand 
thick and quick. Um, I started this project on a whim with some yarn that I had left over and stashed from a long time ago and then I of course had to purchase more because it wasn't enough and I will have to purchase more again at another a later date when I work on it more exclusively but this is like my long-term project so uh, I believe this is the Stormfront colorway I think this gold is turmeric and the pink I have no clue I, that escapes me right now it's like a baby pink so yeah I love this chunky knit blanket these are so fun because they're really easy I mean this amount of crocheting really took zero time the weight is very satisfying um, although I don't usually like the feeling of acrylic oh, I stabbed myself in the eye this eye and then I closed this eye <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just been a nice project. I don't know what else I could say about it. If you want yourself a nice big blanket, maybe try something like this. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of nice when my hands are getting sore from knitting and I need to change up the muscles I'm using. And the only other crochet project I'm really active on is like lace weight yarn, basically, with a teeny tiny hook. So yeah, this is satisfying when you just want to feel like you're accomplishing something. I guess that's all the projects that I will talk about today. Um, I do have some, I do have lots of knitting plans. I want to say for this year, but with everything else I have going on right now, there's really no telling how much I'll truly accomplish. I'm sure, especially when the baby comes, um, I'm hoping I'll still have plenty of time to work on stuff, but in the very beginning, I, I don't really know. Um, so I'm not setting myself up with too many promises in terms of my plans. I do have a make nine that I, I put up on Instagram and I love every single project on there. I'm going to knit them all eventually. I'm working on one right now, which is my powder wrap. So I can at least feel like I'm ticking something off of the box there. So I do have, this one acquisition, this is a Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. They were having a sale in November, I believe. I can't remember anything anymore because it's been two months since I recorded or recorded a podcast that will go up. But this is the sweatshirt colorway. This is the yarn I will be using for my cable knit sweater. And uh, there are two that I am considering. There's one that is really calling my name. I want it so badly, but it looks a lot more. It's the one I was describing earlier. It's called Andawa, and it's a it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern, but I can't remember the specific designer right now who designed it for Brooklyn Brooklyn Tweed, but it's called Andawa, and it is a cable knit sweater that is knit in pieces and then seamed, and it's so beautiful. You can have a variety of necklines. I like the one that's in the the project photo. It's a little bit wider. It's more of like a boat neck with an interesting, it looks like, I mean, it's where you seam the sweater, but it has that ridge, like three needle bind off look on the shoulder. And that might be the technique they call for, I'm not sure, but I don't, I don't own the pattern yet. Um, but uh, the other one is called Bronwyn, and that is also a Brooklyn tweed pattern. And that one is a bit more of like a traditional I would say shape for a sweater, especially a cable knit sweater, and it has a beautiful cable pattern. So I don't think it would necessarily be any easier than the Andawa, <clears throat> than the Andawa, but I would get to, I think, unless that one is knit in pieces and I haven't noticed, but I, I think that one's knit in the round, but I would get to avoid the seaming at the end. Um, I haven't, I haven't decided. I... We'll put links to both down below and maybe you guys can help me decide. Um, if I were to knit the Undawa, I don't know when I would get to wear it and that's why I'm wanting to wait because it does account for a lot of positive ease but it's um, a little bit more cropped and the, the silhouette of it is like my dream sweater silhouette. So to me it just is perfect in every single way but the other one I think might be a little bit easier to wear at the moment with the pregnancy and after the fact but 
Anyway, so I did get um, my sweater quantity of the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the sweatshirt colorway, and this will inevitably turn into a cable knit sweater at some point. I'm all over the place today. <laughs> uh, it's been an exciting week and my brain is like just all over the place. I don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> I think this is turning out to be a pretty long episode. So hopefully that makes up for the fact that my last episode was a shorter episode and then I haven't been here in two months and I held out on you with the podcast I last recorded. Um, oh, here I am at the end of the video telling you goodbye and I remember that I had one other thing that I have finished. <laughs> which is this teeny tiny baby beanie. And this is not for my baby, but I will be knitting the same thing for my baby. Um, my husband's friend's wife recently had a baby. So I was planning on uh, sending this over to them. I need to get it in the mail, but I was holding off to show it quickly on the podcast. And then I almost forgot, which would have been a, a version of sad, I think. Um, so yeah, this is a very cute little golden mustard baby beanie. <laughs> this is in Cascade 220. Um, the, I don't know the color way. I bought this some time ago when I was pregnant my first time around because I intended on knitting a tassel hat for for my baby. And then uh, I didn't want to just let the yarn sit because I felt like that was kind of sad. And so I decided to turn it into something for a baby and then I found out I was pregnant again and so now I'll knit another one for mine but yep this is a very easy project this might have been the pearl soho classic cuffed beanie pattern I think is what it was called um yeah pregnancy brain let's let's go with that but very cute very squishy I think this will look really cute on their little baby so that's like my first baby knit in a long time. And I guess now I'm, I'm excited to uh, knit all the things for my baby at some point when I have time and not a ton of other projects going. So, <laughs> um, okay, well, I've kind of told you live stuff throughout the episode. There's not really much else to say. I'm recording this post recording. I forgot to mention, um, and I've already put my tripod away. So now you get like what looks like, um, on the job vlog footage, but <laughs> I meant to mention that I have not been updating my Etsy shop in a while. I have, I'm going to show you real, real quick. I have lots of really beautiful hand dyed yarns that I've been making and a ton more than you would find on my Etsy shop. I really like this one. <laughs> it's called Neon Panda. And anyway, I've got lots of project bags and all kinds of stuff um, that I've had, that I've been working on, but I've been so focused on getting my store open. So it hasn't gone on Etsy in a while is what I'm trying to say. But I haven't forgotten about Etsy and I am absolutely still going to be putting everything on Etsy. It's just going to take me a little time. I'm thinking maybe by next weekend, which we're still in February, I'm thinking by maybe next weekend, I will have a big update and put everything I have up because yeah, this is way, way more than is on Etsy, which if you've, I've noticed a lot of people have been checking my Etsy shop recently probably when I've been sharing my yarns on Instagram. And if you're going on there and wondering, like, I have not seen this and that kind of thing, it's because this isn't available there yet, but it will be soon. So I haven't forgotten about you all, I promise. Um, I know there's lots of people who have told me they would like to shop with me, but don't live in the area. So yes, I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoy the little walkthrough of my store. Oh, oh hello. Still figuring out some of the bigger picture, long-term goals aspects of my store, but for right now, I'm just so happy with where everything is. Um, so thank you for all your support. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching this episode. Um, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I'm on there. I, I took a long break and now I'm on there every single day. So um, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, like I've said a hundred times and I hope that you are having a lovely time 
and uh, that you're working on something that brings you happiness. And uh, yeah, thank you. See you next time. Bye.